Now, my name is Judge Jim Gray, and I'm running for Vice President of the United States of America as a Libertarian, along with Governor Gary Johnson for President, the most qualified person to be President of the United States that I know of. I believe in this so severely that uh, I'm devoting myself to it as much as I can. Uh, for the last five weeks, I've done nothing but campaign, taking away from my private mediation group, but I believe in this, like I say, and I have more experience than anyone else that's running for vice president. You know, I will be the first Peace Corps volunteer to be elected to national office. I'm proud of that. The only one of the six of us running for president or vice president that's been a part of the military. I'm proud of that as well. It gives me a perspective. I was a federal uh, prosecutor for a number of years and a trial court judge for 25 years. So I'm proud of this. I think I bring something to the table. And Governor Johnson, again, he's the guy. So anything I can do to support him in this candidacy, it's the most patriotic thing I can do for the country I love. The first thing we really need to look at is for you, because you are bankrupt as we speak, that uh, my generation has been so irresponsible, we have spent much more than we brought in. So the first thing we need to look at is our economy. Governor Gary Johnson and I will submit a balanced budget to Congress right away. We can't pass it, that's up to Congress, but we'll hold their feet to the fire because we've got to bring back financial responsibility. That's probably number one. Uh, there's probably 17 number twos, but that's the first thing that we will do. Pretty much I was raised the same way as everyone else. I would be raised to say, to equate heroin with bad, with evil, with prison. And then I didn't really think about it. As a federal prosecutor, prosecuted drug cases, thought they were appropriate. But once you're a judge, you see in your own courtroom, we're turning low-level drug offenders through the system for no good purpose. Uh, we're even arresting and incarcerating big-time dealers. That doesn't mean that we have less drugs sold in that area, just a profit motive. Uh, employment opportunity for somebody else. So you just start looking at it and then you come to the realization that the tougher we get with regard to drug crime, literally the softer we get with regards to the prosecution of robbery, rape, and murder because we only have so many resources in the criminal justice system. So let's stop trying to protect people from themselves and start trying to protect us from each other. And so that's the way you do it. And eventually you realize the truth, and I'm a libertarian, this is a truth for us all, that there's, the government has as much, much right to defend and control what I as an adult put into my body as it does what I put into my mind. It's none of their business. But if I drive a motor vehicle impaired by, you name it, methamphetamines, marijuana, my drug of choice, which is alcohol, that is a crime. What's the difference? Because now by my actions, I'm putting your safety at risk. That's a legitimate criminal justice function. But otherwise, knock it off. You know, we are today in drug prohibition. I, I equate that with alcohol prohibition from before. I've written a book called Why Our Drug Laws Have Failed and What We Can Do About It, A Judicial Indictment of the War on Drugs. You get through my book title, it's probably pretty long, but you know where I'm going. I have a chapter on what we call the erosion of civil liberties, where's Paul Revere? Because we have lost more of our civil liberties because of the war on drugs than anything in the history of our country. And once you lose your civil liberties to the government, you will never get them back. And as I said earlier this evening, the soul of our country, the very soul of our country is our freedoms and our liberties, and we're giving them away without a whimper. And our people, the founders of our country, would be very upset with us, and rightfully so. The term controlled substances is the biggest oxymoron of our lives today. Why? Because as soon as you prohibit something, you give up all of your control whatsoever about quality, quantity, price, place of sale, age restrictions. Give up all of those to juvenile street gangs and other thugs. So we couldn't actually do it worse if we tried. You start with marijuana here in Colorado. You as adults are fully able to decide how best to treat this issue. And it will be historic. You tell the federal government, we as adults can do this, get out of the way, and they will listen to you. It's going to be historic. You're going to stand up for federalism, which is what our country was based upon, allowing each state to decide how best to support and defend its people, and let the federal government off to what they do best, which is, you know, our military and keeping us safe, having a national judicial system, etc., and leave the state issues for the state. You in, Cal in Colorado here with Amendment 64 are in a position to strike a blow for freedom and for reality. We are getting support from every area imaginable. We really do actually appeal to 
the move on movement, you know, the Occupy movement. They really don't want our military to be involved in all these conflicts around the world. They really don't like the idea of crony capitalism, where we're paying people not to grow corn or choosing winners and losers in the marketplace. We also appeal to the Tea Party. You know, we really would have responsibility at all levels of society. We appeal to the Green Party with regard to certain issues regarding our, our liberties and our freedoms. Uh, we appeal certainly to Republicans. We are in the mainstream of American political thought today. We're both financially responsible and socially tolerant. No one's going to accuse Obama of being financially responsible. No one's going to accuse Romney of being socially tolerant. We are there, just like most other voters, just a question of exposure. With regard to the FDA, Personally, I would privatize it. You know what Underwriter Laboratories is. They give their seal of approval privately to toasters or vacuum cleaners or whatever. You could do the same thing with regard to these other issues. Uh, the Fed FDA is an enormous bureaucracy where they have every vested interest in saying no, not making a decision, kicking it upstairs, kicking it downstairs. If you are with the FDA and you decide to approve 15 drugs, and they all work, they save lives, they make people more healthy, but one of them harms some people to some degree, your head will roll. So you have every vested interest in saying no. In the private sector, it's just different. And then you can actually get a lot more responsibility. Today, I'm told it costs somewhere in the order of $800 million to get any drug passed through the FDA and adds about another extra five years on this. So you have drugs around the world, in Germany, Japan, Austria, wherever, that are actually saving lives. We can't even use them in our country. Our government today is actually intentionally trying to keep us living in fear. And you know something? There's some things that the government cannot protect us from. That's simply reality. Let's be adults and recognize it. Let's protect ourselves where we can, be reality driven. But when we can't, let's just not live in fear. Because the government has a vested interest in getting more and more of our freedoms and liberties away from us to get more and more powerful. That's what's happening. I would say to stand up and say no. I would also say that, look, the government is trying to get people, young and old, to be dependent on the government. Look, I was in the Peace Corps. I know there's some people that cannot take care of themselves. We'll have a safety net, but government is the last resort instead of the first resort. Rely upon yourself. You can do it. Anybody in your school, you can accomplish whatever you want to, if by industry, by working, by sweat labor. And if you fail, have the freedom to fail. Pick yourself up. Don't swear at the world. Just say, okay, I've learned that wasn't an idea that works. Let me try something else.